The picture you see me working on right now wouldn't be considered art by some people, by my professors to be more precise. As some of you might know, I have been studying art in Germany for some years now. While I always mentioned that in regard of skill and technique, it never really had an impact on me. Maybe in the way of how I approach and think about art. So first, let me give you an idea how I define art. My definition for art is that everything is art, as long as there is one person claiming it to be, even if it's just the creator themselves. It just varies in value. I don't see the point in fighting over what to call art just because I don't understand it or like it. It can be art, even if, to me personally, it has no meaning or value, so no need to argue over terms. Anyway, it began around a year ago where I would take artworks like this to my colloquies, well knowing that they wouldn't be the favorite things among the professors. Over the years I already had an idea of what those people want to see in their seminars, speaking of course only for my university. And to be approved, I felt one of the conditions was that your work can't look pretty on a conventional level. With that in mind, I submitted my work and the feedback was pretty devastating. I thought they would at least say a word or two about the execution or something about my choice of colors, but they actually ignored this stuff completely. It was mainly about how it was too tacky, tasteless and how it would lack my personality and therefore anybody could do that. The last part really bugged me though, since even if the motive doesn't necessarily convey a personal story of mine, it still shows something of me. Why would I choose to draw this image? Why those colors? What am I interested in? There's a lot of questions you can ask that to bring you closer to an artist even if there's no direct connection to a personal anecdote. But back to the topic. I expected the critique wouldn't be to my liking, though I was surprised that there was not a single word encouraging me to continue this way. They advised me to go more abstract, leave more to chance. At that point, I knew that I needed to draw a line between my casual work and the stuff I needed to do for university. I didn't want to give up on the work that I was regularly doing, and so I decided to only take work done especially for the profs liking to university, which was a more difficult process than I thought. I started internalizing the critique and worked on a project where I would paint random people in a very free manner, like you can see on screen right now. A limited palette would give a more abstract feel to it, and overall I didn't really care about the accurate depiction of the people. After I finished a few, I went to the colloquy again, and again it wasn't to their liking. The pictures looked too forced, and the color palette was still too harmonic. They would feel my intention was to produce something that people could consider art, something for them. So again, they gave me advice to work on more personal stuff, and that I should leave more white spaces, or how it is called, negative space. And I did. I tried to think of something personal that I could combine with drawing faces. Fortunately I have a twin brother, so I thought I could do a series of self-portraits that play with the fact that you might not directly be able to tell if it was me or my brother. Playing the twin crowd though felt quite awkward, but I couldn't really identify the problem they had with the lack of personality in my work, so I thought this could be it. After all it appeared that it was just an empty phrase, because when I showed them the project, all of a sudden they were all about my working process. They criticized that I was using an eraser, that I wouldn't be confident enough letting mistakes on the paper or even declare something a mistake by using an eraser in the first place. So. The essence now was that I shouldn't use a pencil and just work with plain color. With that given, I didn't really care about the motive anymore. They told me I should look up Marlene Dumas' work, and after watching some interviews with her, I thought that I could also just go with famous people. I listened to a lot of Crystal Castles, and since Alice Glass, the lead singer, looks quite artsy, I chose her to be the subject for the next project. I would randomly pick photos from Google Image Search and choose aggressive or unsuitable colors and sketch randomly anything that caught my interest, leading to a bunch of images that were done in two days. Exams were getting close and I chose this to be the project for it. And what can I say, it went in a pretty strange direction. There was a second auditor I had never really met before, and so he asked me where I was coming from regarding my early works. Apparently you had to take some of your old stuff of yours as well, but apart from the fact that nobody told me, I didn't even want to show it because I knew it wouldn't help me. He insisted that he couldn't score me without seeing the progress I made, 
So I succumbed to his demand and showed him my demon art on the tablet. That of course was full of manga work, which he of course had to spring at like a vulture. What if I told you that stuff isn't art? Yeah, that question again. Nevertheless, I must say I was pretty surprised how quickly it went there, because I felt it was a really cliché move for an art professor. I told him that people have asked that question about a lot of things over the past centuries, and that time proves that definitions in people change. But it didn't stop there. I found myself now in a situation comparable to a questioning, where one auditor would ask a question and the other one would shoot another one not even looking for an answer. So they asked me if I went to conventions, what I would do there, would I sell my work. They asked me if I talked to people about studying art. And I answered yes of course if people were curious, but I would also tell them that I studied German language as well because I would become a teacher. And then they criticized me for that because apparently it would reduce my credibility as an artist. But I think the most bizarre question was when the professor wondered if I had any political views at all, implying that my work was too immature for me to be an informed individual. What should take 20 minutes took almost an hour and I went out of the room for them to deliberate. After all, the exam was scored with an A-, which considering the average of that exam was a pretty bad grade. They told me it was due to the fact that I got lost during my explanations. The stains of paper I did were exquisite, but it all took so long, so they had to detract points. I mean, seriously? I didn't even want to talk about this stuff, that's why I didn't bring it with me in the first place. The only thing that calmed me down was that it's just on paper and actually doesn't really have an impact on anything. But still, this was an experience that taught me a lesson and it made me think about the whole topic of studying art and why it all went in that direction. When you begin studying and you have no idea what to draw, the profs always tell you to work on something that you love, that interests you and that you feel good about. So when you talk about it, you can sell it authentically and if needed, answer questions. If manga is your topic though, or as I like to put it, anything that could be considered beautiful by a lot of people and especially you, the opinion of the professor drastically changes and I feel that is due to various reasons. First, I feel like the professors often live in their own art bubble, so they never really got in touch with matters like manga or pop culture work in the first place. They often think that people are plainly copying, not recognizing different signatures, approaches or styles. It's like when you show me a bunch of abstract paintings, out of comfort I would say they all look the same and I feel that is often what they are doing. Another reason is that they go with the flow that's dictated by the market, while constantly denying a market in the first place in order to keep you neutral and authentic. So when they say do what you're passionate about, but don't do manga or plain pretty pictures, it is because they think about what sells. Professors consider art like manga or just pretty pictures like the one you're seeing right now, often to be tacky or just commercial and therefore inauthentic and without deeper meaning. Illustrating for them is just a service done for the money. It's unlikely for it to be part of the galleries that these people are visiting. Thus it's not bringing money on the art market and thus it's not art. The ambivalence of this is that they judge commercial art for being part of a market while they try to push you only to fit into another market. I mean if art is as free as they claim it to be, they could just let you do your manga or pretty things. But again, this is just how I feel about it and what I concluded out of my experience. Uni still isn't over, I will work on my bachelor very soon and I don't think there will be any change over the next years, at least for the situation where I live. So what do you think is the reason for the limitation of art, if there is any? Maybe you have had different experiences, so feel free to tell me in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, subscribing and maybe even for supporting me on Patreon. If you are interested in more of my art related opinions, let me know in the comments.